may have a seat. Let's talk about quitting. I shared with a group of friends this week that I've had a lot of jobs in my life, 40 jobs. I've worked just about everywhere, on the back of a garbage truck, on a farm, making food, serving, whatever you wanted, washing dishes, whatever it was. I've had a ton of jobs. And uh, because I've had a ton of jobs, I've had a lot of opportunities to quit. And I've seen a lot of people quit. You ever seen someone quit a job? I mean, quit a job in an epic fashion, okay? If you want to be entertained this afternoon, you get on YouTube and see quit job angrily. That's all you got to type into YouTube, and you'll have entertainment for days, okay? And <laughs> my best friend, my, my best quitting experience that I've ever gone through. I wasn't the one quitting. It was actually Ben. Ben hated his job at Papa John's. I know this because the night that Ben quit in epic fashion from Papa John's, I was the manager on duty. I don't know how I find my place in these positions, my, myself in these positions, but it was, it was epic. I'm telling, let, me, let me just break it down for you because, hey, you don't know. You might want to quit your job tomorrow, and this would be your exit strategy, okay? And so we're at Papa John's. It's Friday night. Anybody ever worked at a, Papa, a pizza place on Friday night? Yes. And do you know how bad it is when your name is John and you work at Papa John's? And so when, when jokesters like to call Papa John's and you answer the phone, thank you for choosing Papa John's. This is John. How can I take your order? Is this Papa John's? You click. Call back. Try it again. Try again. We don't need jokes here. It's Friday night. It's chaos. It's busy. It's crazy. <laughs> and Ben's mad. Ben's probably mad. I don't know. I don't know why he's all that mad, but he's mad because he had to put a plastic thing on top of his car, you know, that says Papa John. So when he drives around town, he's like a moving advertisement. You know how it goes. And he was just mad about that. He's mad about a lot of things probably. I don't know. But he, he's getting frustrated. He's getting mad. He's moving. Finally, he doesn't give a two-week notice. He doesn't give a resignation letter. He doesn't even give two-minute warning to all the customers that have now filled the lobby of Papa John's all waiting for their thin crust, delicious, better pizza, better ingredients, okay? That's, that's what they're waiting for, and, and Ben's losing it. And it's not a very big store, Dustin. It's, it's not that big. Like, you can reach out and touch everybody. And it's not that big, but it's, it's like a caged animal. He's just moving around in the back. You know he's not happy, and then all of a sudden, it's over, Okay? And he's just done. Pizza hits the fan. Is that, is that how we say it now? Pizza hits the fan. He's done. And he's, he storms out, passing the whole gallery of audience of now customers who have now forgotten about their thin crust pizza. And they're watching Ben quit in epic fashion. Ben goes out into the, <laughs> into the parking lot, which is full of people. He takes off his official red hat. He's so angry, right? And he just chucks it. Like, what? Where are you, where is it? Going? It's a hat. It doesn't even really fully fly all that well. And obviously, it didn't give redemption to how he was feeling. And so in redneck fashion, he takes off the shirt. So now he's in the parking lot. <laughs> and he's got his shirt. And he's so mad. <laughs> all, all the employees are now not working at Papa John's. We're watching Ben lose it in front of the front door. All the customers, instead of watching the pizzas made, they're all now facing outwardly, watching redneck Ben just go crazy. And he's got his shirt, and he's throwing it down. And, and he finally comes, you can just see like the lights are slowly dimming in his mind. He's making decisions you shouldn't make. And he finally walks over to the front door, the only entrance and exit to the restaurant. And he throws his shirt on the ground, and then he gets down with his lighter, and he lights it on fire. Yes! Lit it on fire! I'm thinking in my mind, this is awesome. <laughs> this is epic. Lit the shirt on fire, and he gets into his little Honda Civic, and he's so angry, and he peels out, and I just didn't have the heart to be like, the plastic sign on your car. We need that back. Oh, forget it. Keep it. I have no idea what happened to the plastic sign. We had to put the fire out. The customers all got a nice show. Ben quit. Give it up for Ben somewhere in Ohio. I hope he's here, really, because I hope he's here, because if you're like Ben, then you need Jesus, and if you're like me, you need Jesus. But if you're also like me, and as a pastor, I get to have a lot of conversations with people, and I get to hear about their life, and just to be you know, straight with you. Sometimes the stories that come back to me are just downright 
discouraging to hear. But I'm just hearing them. I'm not even living them. And they're just sharing with me about how they're so overwhelmed in so many areas of their life. Like, I think every single one of us probably have an area of our life we are discouraged, overwhelmed, and you just want to quit. You want to walk out. You're done. Couples sit in front of me and share with me the tension in their marriage, and they just say, I'm done. They talk to me about how to raise their children, trying to figure this out, and they say, I just feel like I'm done. Like, I just want to quit. I don't know what to do. Have you ever felt that way? You ever been there in your job or your career, and you're like, I have no exit strategy. I have nowhere to run. I feel so stuck. And when you feel stuck, you get tired. Don't you just tell, I mean, haven't you heard and said, I'm tired? I mean, if you've ever said, I'm tired, and it's the morning time, and you've had two cups of coffee, this is for you. Easter is for you. If you've ever just felt downright empty inside, because when you're tired long enough, you feel empty inside. Like you just have nothing more to give this person. You have nothing more to give this situation. You have nothing left. I've been there. And that's why Easter means so much to me. Because if we're going to look at anybody who had a million reasons to walk out, a million reasons to walk out, it's Lady Gaga. What, you're like, what? <laughs> I listen to the radio. I hear a lot of good songs. Actually, next week, we're going to be starting a brand new series called Playlist. And we're going to take like popular songs that we've all heard on the radio, and we're going to pull biblical truth out of them. There's one song, though, I couldn't wait. And I said, we're going to play that on Easter. We're going to play this Lady Gaga song. I texted, text, texted Pastor Joe. I said, Joe, you want to sing this Lady Gaga song for me on Easter? <laughs> This joker's like, sure. He don't even know his song. He's like, I'll sing Lady Gaga. He's so talented. And um, he, so he's going to sing this Lady Gaga song. But if you could pick a soundtrack for your life, if you just want to quit and stuck, this song by Lady Gaga, it nails it as a soundtrack for our life. And really, it's a soundtrack for culture, isn't it? So let's hear Joe sing Lady Gaga on Easter. Listen to this. <laughs> Joe, you have just earned the most waterline street cred of Easter 2018 singing Lady Gaga. He ends the song by saying, give me just one good reason to stay. There's a million reasons to walk away, but just give me one good reason to stay. Some of you may have walked in here today. And you might have Easter on the outside. but you know that you're quitting on the inside. There's someone that you're quitting on. There's someone you're ready to quit on and run out on. There's somebody, there's something that you want to quit on. You're done. I got good news for you. If that's your playlist today, and there's only really one last place to look for one good reason. It's Jesus Christ. 
I don't know if you've ever found yourself in that place. There has been in my life, there's been times where when I was dating Danielle and I probably asked her to marry me and she said no and I was like, come on, and I, I'm going to break up with this girl. I'm gonna, you know, I, I can't do this, but I loved her. I'm so glad I didn't quit. But it's because of my relationship with Christ, I truly believe that God was in this and I knew that, if, that he would, could be my reason. And with Dean and Dayana, my kids, there's been so many times I'm like, oh, I'm Lord, oh, Lord. What am I going to do with them? They're so much like me. <laughs> this ain't good. But I just turned to the Lord and I said, I need, I need you. I need you. The one place we can look on Easter to say, where do we go when we just need one good reason we can look at Christ. I mean, that's the only place we can go. Notice this, though. Jesus finds himself in the exact same place. In, in John chapter 12, Jesus is having this conversation with God, and he says this. Jesus replied, now the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory. Now my soul is deeply troubled. Should I pray, Father, save me from this hour? And Jesus knows what's coming. He can see what's ahead, the pain that's ahead, and all the difficult circumstances that are ahead. Can I, can I just share them with you? Might have, might have come into Easter and all the chaos of life. You might have forgotten what happened on that cross, but you got to remember that Jesus was betrayed by his best friends, Judas and Peter and all the disciples. And he, all that he had done for them, they denied even knowing him. He was scourged and whipped. This is a death sentence. 40 lashes. But they only gave Jesus 39 just to keep him alive enough for the cross. And this torture was designed to disfigure and to destroy the person so they're not even, vis they're not even possible to even look human. He was crowned with, with thorns, placed on his skull, insulting the claim that he was the king of the Jews. They mocked the people he cared for. They mocked his heavenly father. They stripped him naked and they humiliated him. They forced him to carry a, a heavy cross through an angry mob who spit on him and screamed insults at him. Stakes driven into his hands and his feet and lifted up, just, just destroyed, lifted up from the earth so that he could suffocate under his own body weight. Jesus Christ, who is sinless, became the sin of the world. Why would he do that? What caused him to say, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to stick to this. What could make that happen? We'll look at John 12 again. Jesus said, now my soul is deeply troubled, and should I pray, Father, save me from this hour. But this is the very reason I came. Man, it's, it's incredible to me what a person can endure when they have one good reason. It's incredible to me. And when you look at Jesus, he has a mission. He came on this mission to say, I'm going to seek and to save those who are lost. Like, I want to set prisoners free, captives, the people who are broken and hurting. He didn't come for the righteous. He came for the sinners, the broken, the people who don't get it. He came for the people who were shoved to the sides, the people everyone else had given up on, the people who were probably ready to quit. He came for them. He didn't come for the healthy. He came for the, to heal people, to help people, the hurting. For this very reason, he said, I'm going through this. Give me one good reason. The author of Hebrews put it perfectly when they write this. For the joy set before him. Let me read that again. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. For the joy set before him, he scorned its shame. For the joy set before him, Jesus sat down at the right hand of the throne of God and consider him, consider Jesus, who endured such opposition for sinners so that right there, that's why. That was his reason. You will not grow weary and lose heart. You were the joy set before him. Are you seeing this? 
You were the reason he was on the cross. And he said, it is finished. Like all that pain and hurt and brokenness and every single moment that you want to quit, Jesus says, I have accomplished the mission. I have come for you. And when he was placed in the grave, he died. And he rose again. He's alive today so that when you are weary and you want to lose heart, you can say, I have one good reason Jesus Christ is alive. I have one good reason. When he was on the cross and he says, forgive them, he was saying that for you. Like all the ways that you have stiff-armed God and rejected him, he said, it's forgiven. All the sins you've ever done in your life and all the sins you will ever do, he loves you that much. He won't quit on you. You don't have to get it in order. You don't have to make it right. He will. Oh, that's where the power comes from. That's why I celebrate Easter myself because there's been so many times in John Freed's life where I have messed up and I have sinned and I've been able to come back to a Savior and go, because you're alive, I know that you can forgive me. And because you're alive, I know that the mission is complete and I'm restored and I'm redeemed and you're going to take all the junk in my life and make it right for those who love you. So it's all about a relationship. I don't care how many times you didn't come to church or you have come to church. It's It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's about a relationship. It's where he steps into your life and he gives you incredible strength. Some of you want to quit. I want to remind you today, it takes death to have a resurrection. It takes pain to have progress. It takes a trial to have a testimony. And it's going to take a struggle to have a story worth telling, but you got one good reason today to keep going. You got one good reason to keep on. You got one good reason not to quit. You got one good reason not to walk out. You got one good reason not to give up. You got Jesus. Do you? Would you stand with me? I wish Ben was here. Oh, man, I wish Ben was here. Hey, Ben, if you're watching online, I wish when I was the manager of Papa John's, I could have been like, hold on. I don't know what's going on in your life. But can I tell you about Jesus? He'll forgive you. And he'll give you the strength to forgive others. He'll love you. And he'll give you the power today to love others. He wants to give you peace. He wants to give you joy and patience. Oh, you need patience. You know you need patience. Hope. There's only one place to find all of these things. In a world of chaos, (laughs) self-control. In a world that's on your shoulders, he gives you gentleness. And where you have no faith, he will give you faith. He will prove himself. He's God. He's got you. And you might have felt like today that someone's walked out on you. Someone's quit on you, and you know what that feels like. And you don't need to quit. God's not going to quit on you. So I want to give you that chance now. There's somebody today who wants to ask Jesus into their heart. They want to be reborn. They want to restart. There's somebody today that I've been praying for all week, saying, God, we're going to have this Easter experience. I want to make you famous, Jesus. I want people to know that if they would just know you, give their lives to you, confess their sins, and come to you as their Lord and Savior, that you would do everything else. You would make right all the wrong. You haven't quit on them. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, don't be looking around. If you're looking around, I'm going to poke you right in the eye. I just want to give you a private moment right now. A private moment for you to reflect on your life. You see the areas where you want to quit, where you're done. It might be Easter on the outside, but you know where you're at in the inside. 
And this is that moment right now where you're opening the door of your heart and you're saying, Jesus, come in. You initiate it with just honesty, just confessing to the Lord, I need you. I confess that I've broken. I confess that I'm hurting. I confess that I've sinned. You would accept that free gift of salvation. You are not going to be able to earn this. It's love. It's a love that is so full of grace and mercy, it is overwhelming when you truly identify, when you truly experience it throughout your life. But it's a relationship that he wants to have with you right now. And you say, John, I don't believe. But I'm telling you, he believes in you enough. You give him the faith that you have, as small as a mustard seed, the Bible says. And you'll move mountains. Let him prove himself to you today. Hey, to all of our friends who are watching online, welcome to the journey. At Waterline, we believe that everybody's on a spiritual journey. What we want to do is journey with you. If today's talk spoke to you in any way, would you please let us know that? You can email us at WTLN at WaterlineChurch.com. Share with us your story. One of our pastors would be excited to connect with you. Thank you so much for watching and sharing this message online. Continue to share it around to your friends and family members as we continue to grow together and change the world.